dancing is one of my absolute favorite um, things to do. And I like to be like couples dancing. I like to follow. It's fun. Nice. All right, everyone. Hey, guys. It's Leah Mason Virgin, your Christian business coach, life coach, and author at BurstingWithBlessings.com. And today I have an absolutely amazing guest that I am so thrilled to share with you guys. I have Jessica Heimsoth here with us, who is a productivity coach for Christians with ADHD. However, caveat, not that I, I don't even know if I have it, um, but she's already <laughs> helped me. I've been following her probably for like, I've been stalking her a little bit. Um, God brought us together in an amazing way uh, on Instagram. And I've just been listening to her, been so encouraged by her and have gotten some coaching by her, highly <laughs> recommends. Um, and so I am just really excited to have her here. Why? Because she knows so much about the brain. And when she sent out an email about sustainable planning and her perspective on that, I knew I wanted her on this podcast <laughs> immediately. And you guys know, I don't share the platform very often. I am really picky about the people that I have on this platform um, because, and we're going to make sure that we share this right now. And we are streaming via StreamYard. So if you are trying to make a comment, we cannot see your name unless you give StreamYard permission. So we're going to share this to a group. We are going to share it into my private group. Um, and we are going to share it onto my page. And you guys can share it onto your own pages because more and more people need need to know about this. So let's see. Okay. Hopefully we're good to go. All right. <clears throat> so like I said, you guys, it is going to be such a great time. I want to talk with Jessica about how God called her into this space. Um, you know, that is the biggest thing that I love to talk about is that God has some really um, amazing things that he has called us to be a part of. And the verse that I stand on is from Psalm 68. Adonai gives the command, the women with the good news are a mighty army. And we are a mighty army with the good news. God has granted us amazing um, gifts and talents that he wants multiplied. And in my opinion, um, you know, he's a really gifted Jessica to come into the online space and talk to people with ADHD or with ways that their brain works, that they're wondering, like, how does that work? Why, why am I procrastinating? Why, why do I have all these, you know, things spinning around in my head? <laughs> um, and I highly recommend that you guys follow her on every thought captive. Did I get Coach. that right? No. I made it complicated it, on Instagram. It's every thought captive coaching <laughs> from the verse that I should know. Corinthians, second Corinthians 10, five. That might, that might be wrong. <laughs> it's my platform verse. I should know it, but I always forget it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So we're going to have Jessica to talk with us about how did she come into the online space? How did you get started? Like, you know, I know a little bit because, you know, I stalked you. And so yeah. I know your bio off of your website. Um, and I will link below where you guys can follow her. But how did you come into the online space and decide, like, I'm going to work with ADHD um, oh Christians? Um, so I was a gifted kid that had straight A's all the way through college. I went to school for writing novels. Um, and post-college, yeah, creative writing. Um, post-college, um, I started to see the effects of an ADHD that I didn't realize I had because without the structure, the incredible structure and reward system of public schooling, um, I just kind of fell apart. I didn't know how to organize myself. I didn't know how to face rejection. I didn't know how to do these things. And I didn't know how to manage a household. I was newly married. Um, so my, my goals in my life kind of fell apart and I experienced many years of horrible coping mechanisms and a lot of self-doubt and just failure after failure. And it was just an awful time period in my life. I did things I wasn't proud of, all of that. 
um, when I started to learn about my mind, yeah, my faith was in the toilet too. I just, I didn't understand why God was letting that happen to me um, when I had been such a good girl, you know? Um, so when I started to learn about my brain and, and understand why I was doing the things that I was doing, uh, that's like the moment when things started to turn around for me, that it was like, oh, it's not just because I'm bad or broken. Um, there are reasons I can learn about these reasons. I can start to improve my own life. So, um, so I did that and I always add by the grace of God because he led me to the therapist that, you know, that, um, introduced that idea to me. He guided me through the resources. Um, and I, I like to bring up that story because now like the pain that I went through drove the good that I do in the world now. And I think that's sometimes we go into life and we pursue things just because they're fascinating to us, which humans are fascinating to me. But a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of my peers and colleagues, we, we find our passion in the world healing something that was hurt in us. And it's very difficult, I think, to look back at that pain and go, this shouldn't have happened when now it's, it's allowing me to connect and help and grow with so many people. So the short story is just that from, a, from a, my own personal rock bottom, I, I decided this is the people that I wanna help, the ones that are just as confused and lost and losing faith as I was. And, um, and so that's kind of how I ended up where I am. I followed my interest and, and my pain um, to this point where now I'm helping people learn about their minds, learning about their behavior, and um, going after the things that God put on their hearts to get, but they're stuck. So that's that's kind of the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> I, I love that. That is a really, you know, I think that's what God often does with us is, you know, takes us to that place of like, you know, realizing our brokenness, helping us to find the tools, the healing strategies, the anointed coaches and counselors that's going to then put us on that trajectory and that path that's going to build into his kingdom. And so tell me like, okay, I don't know a ton about ADHD. Um, you know, I listen to pretty much everything that you put out. Um, <laughs> because I feel like um, it, it applies to, you know, even what most yeah. people call neurotypical. Um, but maybe just, you know, for the audience in general, give us a little bit of a like, what is, what would be some, you know, signs and symptoms of this person might really have ADHD? Yeah. Um, okay. So first I want to preface, when you say like, you listen to a lot of the, like almost everything that I put out, um, but you're, you know, like neutral on whether or not you have any kind of ADHD. That's because my approach to ADHD and the way that I help people with it is to say, actually, you're not that different. You are, we have different brains, but the same behavioral things that guide any other human are at present in your life and you actually do have control. So a lot of the things that I'm teaching are what I would teach to anyone about productivity, about starting, about finishing, about, you know, you're stuck and you don't know what to do next. Um, those, the, the general core of my message applies to absolutely everyone of any neurotype. Um, but what I'm doing is giving people with ADHD the confidence that it actually will work for them too, mm -hmm. because they're so used to it not. So someone with ADHD, it's a, um, it's a uh, syndrome, I believe is the word. Essentially, they look and see if you have enough symptoms in your mm -hmm. life and if they are affecting you negatively enough. It's mm -hmm. like the line is pretty gray, um, <laughs> which I think leads to the confusion that people have about it. But yeah. ultimately, um, trouble remembering like anything, even something somebody just said, the three, three instructions someone just gave you, trouble remembering that trouble sustaining motivation over the duration of a task, um, trouble with distractedness, that's a big one. A lot of people um, with ADHD will sit down to do something and, and they're distracted by remembering they have something else to do. And while doing that, they're, they're distracted by something else they remember to do and then something else. And pretty soon they're in the, 
there is like me i'm like like, you're like talking about me i'm like oh my god and and that like that everybody goes through the things that someone with adhd goes through so that so it's a it's a spectrum one end of it is completely neurotypical and on the other end is someone who can barely function in society and a lot of us fall somewhere on that spectrum once you cross a line into like this is messing up my life. Mm-hmm. I have been trying to get to work on time every single day, like putting mm-hmm. all of my effort into that and I still don't make it. Right. I am not sure what's happening. And part right. of that's the memory, part of that's not paying attention to what am I doing in the morning? So um, there there are, um, I think 18 technical symptoms that, that are listed in psychology um, journals. Um, but the, the interesting thing for people to know is that you, you may have no idea and other people may have no idea. Like when I told my family, actually I, I am diagnosable. I have diagnosed with ADHD. They, they were like, but that doesn't even make sense. Like you're, you're smart. You, you do things when you want to do them. Um, so, so anyone who starts to like follow some people, if you're worried, if you think you, this sounds like you follow some people with ADHD on social media, if it continues to sound like you and you identify with a lot of things, you might be surprised how much a diagnosis could be validating at the very, mm-hmm. or just a community, honestly, to have somebody yeah. that can go, yeah, you, you're you constantly forgetting things. You're constantly distracted. You, you're putting all of your effort into something and still nothing. Like mm-hmm. you just can't, mm-hmm. you want to get off the couch, but you can't. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I think that was a little convoluted, but I hope that helps a little. No, it, it, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, there there are um, there are times where, you know, I believe, like, we forget that there's a spectrum of things, yeah. right? And, you know, to know that you might have these things or why they're happening um, empowers, right? I always say insight is empowerment. And once you got the insight that this is affecting you, this is the way your brain normally functions, then you were able to start seeking out strategies and tools. And I know, ladies, we are going to talk about sustainable planning, but I really wanted to kind of, you know, get an idea of like, what is ADHD in terms of like, you know, what does it look like, you know, and it, for you to give that example of like, can't ever get to work on time, not even understanding, like, how is it that I can't get to work on time? You know, how is it? I sometimes would say I'm losing time. I don't yeah. understand why I'm losing time a lot. And I know I'm on some sort of spectrum. I am very sensory. There is there is not like one tiny little shred of like a of a um <laughs> tag uh-huh. or anything. I'll change my clothes three times a day. Um, you know, so I know I'm on and and sensory for like noise and stuff like that. But you know, we have to find strategies and tools that work for us to um, be yeah. thriving through the day. Um, yeah, and actually, the the like this applies to anybody's brain type. The thing that AD, that an ADHD diagnosis gave me was the permission to believe that it was not me. Hmm. There was not the problem. something inherently wrong yeah. with me. Yeah, it was that. Oh, there. You need to do things differently than what mm-hmm. people are telling you, right? Your mm-hmm. your brain is different, so you need different tools. Um, whereas before, I was staying stuck because people were giving me advice that worked for them, and it didn't occur to me mm-hmm. that that advice would not work for me. I just assumed we were all the same. Um, so, so that's the benefit mm-hmm. of figuring out, like. It, it, you wouldn't have to even be figuring out a diagnosis. It's just figuring out how you how you do differ from mm-hmm. another person and what will work for you and giving yourself permission to believe you've got what you need, like internally, you're not, you're not broken, you're not uniquely uh, messed up, and then just go find what you what you need to succeed yeah. instead of assuming you don't have um, mm-hmm. what it takes. I, and I love that that you um, highlighted that not every strategy works for everyone, but we in American culture, we often have this inundated message that 
everybody who was successful, if they give you their strategy, then it's going to work for you. And then when you try to implement it and you feel what's wrong with me, why am I broken? And I, I'm literally speaking <laughs> um, from personal experience. And so I often say, you know, that we have to strive to find the strategies, the tools, and the anointed coaches and counselors that we specifically need for our unique journey. And the, the, I think because American culture has this like one size fits all, I mean, we're getting a little better. I get that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this one size fits all thing, people then get to a point of, I give up. Mm hmm. I give up. I can't do this. Right. I hear that a lot. I can't do this. And I'm like, no, we just need to find what are the strategies? You know, what are what are the healing herbs, you know, oils like I literally have a cabinet full of stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, I have found through time what what do I need to help my brain, my mm -hmm. chemical makeup, my life. So. I, um, <laughs> I love talking about the brain. So uh, some of you guys know I am a registered nurse. So I spent over a decade in healthcare. I absolutely love the human body. I believe that God has created each of us in such unique ways. And yes, this broken, simple world does do a number on all those things. Brain chemistry, life, I am a child, a product of a very traumatic home. So I have to do things to get my brain rewired. Thank God for neuroplasticity. High fives, Jesus. <laughs> um, and so, you know, maybe before we start really getting into um, sustainable planning, maybe talk a little bit about like, what have you learned in terms of like the brain and chemicals when it comes to trying to plan and trying to execute on a daily basis. Cause girl, you light it up on Instagram about this. I'm always <laughs> like, what did she say about dopamine? Wait, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love dopamine. Um, the, the big overarching thing that I have learned is that when like planning is an action that we take and every action that we take is fueled by an emotion. And emotions are not what we think they are. Emotions are your nervous system, your body reacting to what you are thinking. So when we feel frustration, for example, that is actually our nerves doing things with our blood vessels, our heart and our lungs. It is uh, our physical body reacting to what we are thinking. And in the case of frustration, we are thinking something like, I'm not getting what I want fast enough. Um, so every, every emotion in our body, a physical reaction to what we're thinking is caused by a thought that we believe. And so planning, planning is something driven by and affected by how we feel, which is driven by and affected by how we're thinking. So when, when we do things, when we think things like, uh, I don't have enough time, or I have to choose, like, what's the right answer? I have to choose the right answer. Anything that causes a bunch of negative emotions, we plan or don't plan um, differently. We do any action differently than we might like to. Um, and we're doing all of this unconsciously because most of our thoughts are automatic. They've, we've gathered them up over time as we've grown. Some of them are true. Most of them are not. Most of them, um, somebody, who also didn't understand their thoughts and emotions handed them to us, our parents, our mentors. Some of them, we watched the world as an eight-year-old and thought that must be true. And we still kind of believe that because um, we haven't taken the time to look at that. So anytime we're struggling with any action, in this case, planning is what we're talking about, um, it will come down to what we are believing, um, which is really cool to know as a Christian because of how much God affirms that when, when he talks about renewing, like transforming your life, he says, by renewing your mind, that's how you transform your life. And anytime he invites a change in someone, anytime Jesus changes someone's life, he's giving them truth. That's what changes their life. It changes everything that they feel and everything that they do. Um, so I find it fascinating to realize that that's what's happening in your brain and body 
when you want to do something differently, you need to be believing differently. And that's exactly what God says. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> um, and I like that believing differently yeah. so that we can do differently. And if we are planning something that we've never done before, what is the belief that will get us to that? So let's start, you know, going into your thoughts on sustainable planning for, I mean, you say for ADHD Christians, I say for everyone. For, for sustainable <laughs> planning for humans. Yeah. Well, um, one of the first things that, that, I think is important to think about when we're planning is knowing is setting ourselves up for if it's especially if it's something you haven't done before setting yourself up to be able to evaluate your progress later so a lot of times the thoughts that we have are i'm going to start do i'm going to start working towards an outcome this is my goal um and we don't think about how we're going to know if we're getting closer we think about once i've reached the goal i'll know that it worked um, and that's a problem for anything that takes a buildup of skill. It's a problem for anything that requires trial and error, because let's say that you want to lose weight, but you're not sure what, how to do that for you. What's going to work with my time schedule? What kind of food do I actually need to eat? Um, what kind of exercise will work for me that I can keep, keep it up. That's going to require trial and error. So if you are trying different types of eating, if you're trying different exercises, if you are looking at the scale and going, well, I haven't lost 10 pounds yet. Um, that's a recipe for failure. It's a recipe for quitting. If you have other ways of monitoring your progress, for example, I'm going to try one new recipe every week or one new recipe every day, if that's in your, in your schedule, or I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to Zumba three times a week for a month. And, and that's going to be my progress. If I make it to those classes, I know that I'm doing what I need to do to figure out if this is the, if this is the exercise regimen that's going to keep working for me. Um, but there are other ways to, to set yourself up, but setting yourself up to be able to go. And here's the proof that I am getting somewhere is important. You give yourself a, give yourself a standard to adhere to instead of just okay, I made it all the way to the end. Um, so that's one thing. Um, another thing that we often don't do when we're planning is make decisions that don't have a right or wrong answer strongly and firmly and carry them out. So a lot of the things that we, um, in, in a planning process, there are a lot of decisions to be made. And the longer, the more that we want to have the right answer, the more that we're thinking about, again, I have to get to that outcome as fast as possible. So what's the outcome that's going to get me there? Or what's the out, or what's the decision that will make me feel the best, the fastest? Um, we, we can't know those answers. Can't possibly know those answers a lot of the time, especially, especially in a business. Like, there are just too many variables. There's too many things that could happen. There are too many skills that you could learn. There's too many different ways you could do something. You can't possibly know. So when we're looking for the right answer, um, we spend so much time thinking and debating and going back and forth. And we just gradually erode our own self-trust. Um, a better way to, to move forward is to decide how long we're going to give ourselves to gather information. And then if there's not a clear right answer, to make arbitrary decisions and to commit to learning from them to know this might go poorly and this is the way that I'm going to deal with it if and when that happens. Here's exactly what I'm going to do next. Okay, I like that. All right. So, we so let's say that we're, you know, trying to sustainably plan how to save money. Yeah. Um, you know, talk through that a little bit. If somebody was like, "I need to save money," by, you know, within the next three months. And, you know, they're like, okay, I'm just going to do that. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause that's yeah. what I think most people do. They're like, I'll just save money. And I, you know, I can lovingly say I have problems with numbers. 
And so for me, like, unless they're in an Excel spreadsheet, like they have to be in an Excel spreadsheet. And like my husband has it so that it like, it will minus and add at the same time so that I can see it daily. That's how I, uh, that's how we Dave Ramsey'd one time. And I'm not a hundred percent total <laughs> Dave Ramsey or people don't, don't even get me started on that. Yeah. But I do think that, hit, you know, there are certain concepts there. And so I think this one, you know, I think this one is a big one, especially, especially for Christian women um, yeah. to think on. Yeah. So the first thing that I would do would be to create a space, much larger space and time for thinking about this than most of us do. Mm -hmm. Most of us want to be like, okay, I'm, I'm giving myself 15 minutes. Here's how I'm going to solve this problem. And then just get going because it feels uncomfortable to sit there and think and ask yourself questions. So I would be like, all right, this is going to take a considerable lifetime change. I'm going to block out an hour here, an hour there and give myself three hours to plan this out. And then in that time, I would be thinking about what are the steps that I could take to spend money? What's gonna get in the way, or to save money? What's gonna get in the way of that? Like what's mm -hmm. gonna keep me from being able to, for example, if my goal is we're gonna save this $100 a week, uh, whatever the, that's an easy number to use. Um, save an extra 100 a week. Okay, what's, what am I gonna want to spend that money on? How do I, how am I doing it right now? What will get in the way? And I might think like some of the obstacles would be, my girlfriend wants to go get coffee. She's going to ask me, do you want to go get coffee? And I'm going to want to go get coffee. There's an obstacle, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make Target runs. When I'm in Target, I walk by the, <laughs> I've spent $50 in the dollar aisle. Um, think about those obstacles and then solving for them, mm -hmm. right? what am i going to do instead how am i going to do that instead this is uncomfortable because a lot of those things will go i don't really know how i'm going to solve for this problem if you've given yourself enough space then what i want to offer to you also in that time when you're wrestling with this is to trust that you actually do know mm -hmm. what comes when you ask yourself when you give yourself enough time to go okay i hear you brain you're telling me that you don't know the answer to this, this question. Just, if you did know, what would you say? That's one of my, that's one of my tricky coach questions is to go, but if you yeah. did know, <laughs> if you did know, what would like, just what would you write down? If this was just a throwaway answer. Um, it's hard to give ourselves time to wrestle with those questions. But when we do, and we ask our brains to solve these problems ahead of time, we're much more equipped to deal with them when they occur. And ultimately, some of the obstacles, like in the case of the um, dollar store at Target, mm -hmm. I would end up needing to decide how am I going to think? What specifically will I think when I, when I walk past that mm -hmm. to allow me to take the action that I want? So what I might have to do in that case is be ready to walk by it and go, I am what I am buying today is my dream. I'm buying my dream today. I'm not buying this little toy for my, for my daughter. Or um, though I, I want those because they're cool, but there's a lot of other cool things that I want as well. Um, I, can, I would fiddle with that and, and decide what to think instead. But um, I think I'm I like that. that. No, decide what you want to think. And, you know, as you're, as you're really, <laughs> here's the, here's the thing, ladies, like we don't want to sit down and think about stuff because it makes us super uncomfortable, right? For me, when I sit down and I think about, you know, really changing a habit that I know is negative, a lot of embarrassment and shame come up for me right? So why am I going to sit in that space? Why would I do that, right? Um, so what would you say to the person who's like, okay, I know I have a habit that I need to sustainably plan out. Um, I have failed at it so often. Um, so if I even think about it, I just feel embarrassed and shamed. Yeah. I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked that because I wrote something down. And I wanted to make sure that I said it, which is, um, kind of coming off of that deciding what to think comment where we go wrong with things like that is we start to force 
and repress ourselves with our own thinking. Um, and I think that's another one of those reasons why we don't want to sit and think when that embarrassment comes up, when the, when the shame comes up, what we tend to do with those emotions is run from them, escape them as quickly as possible. Actually, like part of the reason why sitting for so long, planning for so long can be hard because once you're, once you're trying to escape a negative emotion, you're highly destructible. Everything else that you could be doing will get. It's a, a beautiful gift to yourself to take those emotions, to take what you're going through and um, do what I call sitting with yourself. So treating yourself like a small child who's having these emotions and, and thinking about how you would react. Like, would you ever say to them, like, get over it, it's in the past. Would you ever say to them, I know you are stupid, so let's just do better. We have to do better. Um, or would you sit down and go, wow, that sounds like it's really tough. You would feel really bad about that. Um, let, I'm here to talk if you want to talk. Is there anything else you want to say? Like, we don't think about saying that to ourselves. Um, but a lot of times we haven't, we haven't given ourselves a chance to really fully explore our hurt and our shame and the pain that's going on. So that's getting brought into our planning processes. That's getting brought into what we even want for our own futures. That needs to be a part of moving forward is being open to everything we've experienced and being committed to meeting our needs, whether that's mm -hmm. the need to be heard or whether that, you know, it's a, this is a habit you're trying to get over. Assuming that that habit is there because you need something and because you're getting it met in a way you don't like, mm -hmm. but ignoring your need is the reason that it keeps popping back up. Mm -hmm. So, like when we try to change habits, a lot of times we're trying to squash something. And what I invite people to do is, hey, if this, if you want this to change, you've got to take all of yourself with you. You've got to meet all of your needs. And there's a need here that's crying out to be met. You're not listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. Give yourself that gift, right? Listen to the need that's not being met. And in the case of a habit, a lot of time it, it is, um, it's a need for relief. Mm -hmm. It's the need for for care, for time to yourself, for processing time. We're busy, right? We're, we often don't give ourselves, we don't proactively plan for, I'm going to need this many hours by myself to do nothing, right? right. To, not, to not push myself. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So when we are in a place of like, I want to push myself to um, do X during the day, um, you know, what would you, you know, what would you say so that they could sustainably plan into their day versus getting to the end of the day? I mean, like, I can't believe I didn't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anytime we, anytime you experience regret or this, like, I can't, I want to do and I didn't. Um, that's a wonderful time to go, okay, why didn't I, again, let's assume it was a good reason, not, not something to poo on yourself about. Why didn't I, what, what happened? Like, what was I thinking? What was I feeling? What would I need to change to do 15% better tomorrow? The 15% is something that I just started talking about. Like when we stretch ourselves, ideal amount to stretch yourself is 15%. So if you're changing your day, if you're adding an exercise regimen, if you are building a business, like don't, don't expect yourself to know all of it. Don't expect yourself to get it all handled in, you know, a short amount of time. Set up what's a nice 15% that I can grow um, because that's the, the ideal amount to learn and grow. And 15%, that's super vague, right? Use it as a mental construct to think, okay, I think this is about, here's what I visualize as the whole, oh my goodness, talking. Here's what I visualize as the whole, here's you know a chunk of that. I'm gonna add that to my plate instead of all of this that we wanna pile on ourselves at once. Um, so your question was, yeah, I get to the end of the day. That's something that you get to decide what to think about. I just offered a thought, something that I might think, but when we fail, which we will, we don't have to run on our automatic thoughts. We can decide what are we going to think about 
in the wake of that failure. And I would decide that not based on um, what appears to be true. I would decide it based on what will get me further, what will get me closer to the thing that I want. So if what I want is, is to change this habit, then how do I need to think when I fail to change it on a given day? Right? What will help me get back up and move forward? And God offers us a lot of those thoughts. Um, uh, you know, in the, the idea that we are redeemed and all of our mistakes are paid for, like, you don't need to beat yourself up for this. It, that's been handled, right? So you might as well use it. <laughs> I'm going to use this. It's a mistake. I'm human. Christ paid for my humanness. So now I'm going to move forward. There's no need to stay here and, and dwell on it other than to gain information. Interesting. I like that. I like that a lot because I think, um, and, and interesting that you say that because the other day we were unpacking, you know, self-condemnation, overcoming self-condemnation. It is a very um, American Christian culture thing to continue to beat ourselves up over and over and over again. And to very, very much, you know, choose to believe the lies of the enemy, which holds us back, right? You know, we don't, we don't want to, um, you know, we don't want to show up in the online space because the enemy's reminding us that, you know, we aren't worthy of, you know, of this and that because we did X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I, I, one of the strategies I say is I, you know, I want us to choose to say, thank you so much for reminding me about that, because that gives me a chance to praise Jesus. Yeah. Right. Like, so for me, I'm like, you are so right. Like you are so <laughs> right. I did that thing. I a hundred percent did that thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm embarrassed about it. Wish I hadn't, but you know what? I'm going to just praise Jesus right now because I'm forgiven and free. And now I get to go forward and I get to be the light in the world and shine that light and change what others think about themselves because yeah. they now can have Jesus Christ who has redeemed and saved them. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, I'm just like, I'm like, great. You can remind me all you want. And I'll just like, I'm just going to pray and praise. <laughs> um, so, you know, it becomes a little, uh, it has now become less. I get less reminders of my past brokenness and sin um, because the enemy's like, gosh, darn it. That just doesn't work. It just sits there and praises Jesus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find a new strategy. This is that. Have you read the screw tape letters? Gosh, no. No, I am, I am, yeah, I am like really, um, uh, I am extremely emotionally sensitive oh, to, yeah, it's not a um, it's not a no, emotionally sensitive. yeah, I am like highly emotionally sensitive and aware. Like I'm very empathic. I pick up everybody's emotions. You know, I'm the person that's like, sees a commercial that like, you know, something happened. I'm like, oh, yeah! you know, yeah. like, and I'm like, it's, it's fake. It's fake. My brain is like, oh no, it's real. Yeah. Fix the human fix. I am like a healer. I'm a fixer. <laughs> So like in any way, shape or form, like I want to fix everyone, heal everyone. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why I went to nursing school, poor choice, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a waste. No, I'm joking. Um, sort of. Uh, I have, could have picked it a few other ways of doing things. But anyway, I digress. So when we start talking about, the, and and we'll kind of, I know we've we've gone long, ladies, but this is just so, um, in, so empowering and so impactful for us to think about. So when you are, you know, helping somebody sustainably plan something into their day, I, and, and I'm bringing something up that you told me, that I want you to tell others, if you have something that you've scheduled, what do you say to help yourself do yeah. the thing that you've scheduled into your planner or what, what I and a lot of people call calendarize your day. Yeah. You have to yeah. calendarize the things that you want to accomplish or they don't get accomplished. Yeah. And I, I specifically like with my clients, the, the idea is when you're planning, you should be breaking things down. You don't have to break all of it down, but you need to know your next several steps and they need to be small enough that you can put them into a planner, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, break them down to be that small. Longer if it's something that you like, you have a two hour chunk and you can really actually mm -hmm. spend that time. But 
it needs to go into a time slot. It does not, it should not go on a to-do list because if there's any kind of negative emotion around it, you're going to avoid it. You're not going to want to just fit that in there, or you're going to have to force yourself. It's much easier to do something when it's on a calendar and you can go, and this is the time I decided this. This is when I said I would do something. Um, and I guess that's kind of answering your question. So mm -hmm. when I, when I schedule, when I put something into a calendar slot, um, the, sk the skills that I'm working on are always to increase my self-trust. I increase my self-trust on by trusting that when I made the decision about what I was doing with my day, that was, that was the one that I wanted. This is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. This is the time for it. Um, as, as much as possible, I don't digress from, I don't divert from the plan that I set up on the day of. Um, so in a 24 hour period, if I planned it, I'm going to do it. And if I don't like the way that that day went, I adjust the future. So if, oh shoot, I planned too much, like this was too much writing today. It's just exhausting to me. I don't enjoy that. I will adjust moving forward. Now I have, um, now I have data. Now I have information that can help me plan more efficiently for my energy and my brain. Um, but what we train ourselves to do, if we, if we write something in our schedule and then don't, if we allow ourselves to go, mm, actually, I'm going to do this other smaller, less, less intense task instead, is we train ourselves that no decision is, is not nego negotiable, right? Just because I decided it, that doesn't mean I have to do it, which means we can't really plan. Like you can't plan something out because you never know if your present day, present moment self will follow through on what you said. So the self-trust erodes. You can't plan. You can't follow through. Um, it becomes this big, big spiral, downward spiral. Um, the reason that we don't like to, to stick with what we decided is because we are so used to um, overscheduling ourselves and not working with that, not nurturing ourselves when we realize this was too much, this day was too much, um, or not listening when we say, actually, I'm feeling a lot of resistance to this. I need you to pay attention to my needs first as part of this task, right? Um, so again, I, I start talking and then I forget exactly what you asked, but I'm pretty sure it was about the like, what do you do when, when something comes up in your day? It's also like, once you become somebody who does what you said you would and nurtures the part of you that's like, that was too much, right? If you're both of those people, then you can start to set up your schedule to meet all of your needs and know that they will be met, right? You can start to go, I didn't rest enough on Monday. I was very tired by the end. I didn't have any time to process my emotions. I didn't have any time, you know, to read a novel because that's nurturing to me. Um, I'm going to make sure, like that's going in my schedule moving forward. And other things will not will not replace this. Um, that gives you so much power in the middle of you know a difficult task to go. I'm I'm taken care of. Like I've got my rest blocked off. I've got my con connection to other humans blocked off. I've got my prayer time blocked off, and I've got this work time blocked off. I'm getting the things that I want. I'm getting the things that I need. That's accomplish. Like you can accomplish all of those things by being somebody who follows through on what you said. And by adjusting moving forward when something was too hard, too much, or you didn't finish, right? I didn't finish this, so I must have, this wasn't enough time, maybe. Um, yeah, that would be what I would say about that. I love that because there's a lot of self-talk there that is empowering and nurturing. It's reminding yourself, okay, I did plan um, you know, my Bible time and my prayer time, and I have planned my run time and it's because I'm talking about myself right now. So, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, and now is my time that I scheduled for work or, or to content create or to go live or to do my sales outreach or, you know, to fold the laundry or to do the dishes or, you know, and, and for us to really talk ourselves through like, that moment when we're feeling the tension between like, this isn't something that I want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when your brain's going, ah, I don't, 
this is boring and I don't like it. Make it stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a powerful thing that you can do in those cases too. Um, when you find yourself saying, I don't want to, mm -hmm. there's two things to do. One of them um, is to go, okay, what would make this easier? Like, can we, can we, can you do five minutes of this? It's to like, again, treat yourself, treat your lower brain like a toddler, somebody who needs help, someone who needs smaller chunks of time to think about. Can you, would that be okay? Can we do this for five minutes? And to actually just be very gentle with that part of you that's resisting. But another part is to go, when you planned this out, why did you put something you didn't want to do on this list? And to watch what your brain says in response to that, because what mine often says is, well, actually, I mean, I want to, but I don't want to, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that shows you a dichotomy. Like the way that we talk is when I feel bad, I'll tell myself I don't want to do this. And that's not true, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're saying like, um, we're separating ourselves from what we want in that moment because we know that we actually do want that. We know that we do, but we're saying that we don't, and that pulls us away from it. The more that you believe you don't want something, the more your brain will be like, well, then let's find something else to do. So it's actually a powerful reminder to go, I put this on the schedule because I want this. And, and I feel a negative emotion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn. If I don't know how to handle that, I'm going to learn how. And just for those of you that are watching, one of the best ways is just to breathe out very, very slowly. Inhale normally, breathe out for eight or 10 seconds if you can, right? If, you're, if your health permits, because that calms your nervous system and it can allow you to take a lot of action, even when you're not feeling super great, uh, as long as you just keep calming that, that system back down. Um, so yeah, so when the I don't want to's come up, notice if they're not actually true. If it's just, I feel bad. And if you feel bad, then okay, let's learn how to fix that. Let's learn how, not fix it, but like work through it or schedule differently so this isn't so hard. Add some stimulation, add some human connection. Brilliant. I love it. Well, I, I like to listen to an audible book while I'm doing uh, laundry or dishes. That's like uh, and that's easy for me. Sorry, guys, if all of you are going, oh, my God, I, I just I find it like, you know, it's something that uh, doesn't really super bother me uh, unless unless I have way too much on my plate, unless there are yeah. too many things going on and I'm tired and overwhelmed. Then yeah. Um, but yes. All right. That was brilliant, Jessica. Thank you so much for sharing uh, so much with us. It was just a gold mine of, of things <laughs> to think about. And, and so I encourage you guys to, uh, I will put down all the links for Jessica so that you guys can follow her on Instagram. It's, she's so much fun to listen to and to hear all about the neuro stuff and to hear about, you know, the tension between, you know, trying to choose and do and force ourselves. And, you know, and uh, so I've learned quite, quite a bit. Uh, love the brain. Brain is, is, is totally fascinating to me. <laughs> Although in nursing school, the kidneys are my absolute favorite. The kidneys, no kidding. Yes. Um, and people are always shocked by this, but the kidneys are the most intricate, delicate, amazing creations that just to me uh, speak volumes of, of God's um, creative power. Um, and, and we all often dismiss them, but without your kidneys, like you're dead within 24 hours. And I get it, you know, it, but your brain, like we can put you on ECMO. You mean your heart? We can put you on ECMO, but like, you know, like yeah, kidneys are, anyway, I can't even believe I digressed on that. Maybe I do have ADHD. I love that you did because I, this is what I find the most fascinating about humans is that you do not know. You, you cannot predict what somebody is going to be interested in, what they're passionate about. And when you, when I find this, like, cause I'm blown away. Like, I'm like, what kidneys? That I think is so much fun. That, like that, that fascination is because I can't stop talking is what you can bring to your own life like be surprised by yourself and what your inner child says to you like 
being somebody who's like, I'm going to figure out what's so cool about me in this situation. I'm going to figure out what's so cool about me and that person. Like that's so, it's a much more fun way to live than going, oh, I can't do this because here's all of my limitations. Like just go find all the cool stuff. Yeah. Stay curious and stay asking yourself questions. And instead of running from the feelings and the thoughts, I guess my internet was like, ha, huh, just blinked <laughs> out. You see me? All right. All right. Yep. All right, you guys. So go follow Jessica Heimsoth at um, Every Thought Captive on Facebook business page. She's got Instagram. She's got a website. Uh, links will be put down below. Thank you guys so much. Uh, put your questions. We will answer them as the replay will be posted here and on YouTube and wherever Jessica chooses to, to do. And we will see you guys later.